Shalom. I like to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rachak Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, salutations, and blessings to all you Akim out there pushing the truth across the four corners of earth, the elect. All right, peace to all the elect. And it's on, man. It's on. And I just wanted to uh, touch on something because Amalek is looking real weak right now. The real Amalekites, right, the leaders of the nation of Esau. All right, this is an article a brother put me on to where uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, a.k.a. Benjamin Milkowski, uh, basically re referenced the Bible. But when you look at them and they reference the Bible, there actually is action behind it. They're actually doing, you know, the, the, the they're actually using it for extreme extremist purposes, all the while trying to blame us. But what do they say that the problem is young black men in America and some some crazy shit that this uh, Israeli woman said, right, among other statements, right? And we can see now that they're under fire. We can see now that the other nations are, are, are rising up in anger, you know, because they've been treated unfairly, lied upon, you know, and the foundations of their rulership has been completely on lies. And everybody in uh, Western Asia and that part of the world, they know that. They know who the real Israelites are. All right, go to your local gas station and ask Ishmael who the sons are. And tell them, tell them matter of fact, don't ask them shit because they're going to lie to you because Ishmael is full of shit too. But tell them you're the son of Jacob. All right, they know it. They say, okay, yes, yes, yes. I right, go to that part of town where they got the little hookah stores and whatever the fuck. Go in there and tell them you're the son of Jacob when they ask who you are. All right, but um, just getting into the article, I thought it was interesting. All right, it says... This interview incorrectly. Matter of fact, how should the world interpret Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's recent allusions to the Hebrew Bible when discussing his country's war on Hamas? Uh, Post broadcast correction. This interview incorrectly says a quote from a speech that Israeli Prime Minister Net Netanyahu gave on October 28th refers to the Amalekites from the, the biblical book of Samuel. The Prime Minister's office added a citation to his written and translated remarks to indicate. Netanyahu was quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. Both stories call for the Israelites to completely eliminate their attackers. In the book of Deuteronomy, the text reads, Blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sun, uh, under heaven, excuse me. All right, um, let's get right to the sound bite. It says, said this is Netanyahu Israel will not agree to a cessation of hostilities with Hamas after the horrific attacks of October 7th calls for a ceasefire or calls for Israel to surrender to Hamas and his public comment his statements have raised alarms among some critics he's twice referenced violent passages in the Bible to justify Israel's devastating response including this one now you must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. <laughs> Speaking Hebrew, he's comparing Hamas to the nation of Amalek in the passage from the book of Samuel, right? which that's what the note is for. Um, he said the biblical co commandment, this is someone else, the biblical commandment is to completely destroy all of Amalek. And when I'm talking about completely destroy, we're talking about killing each and every one of them, including that word, unaliving. Matter of fact, let me make sure I say that, including their property, including the animals, everything. All right, so th this is how these people talk. You know, this is how these people talk. All right, but remember, they're going to persecute us for reading out the scriptures, but they're reading out of the scriptures, and they're actually destroying hospitals. They're actually graping, all right, women, you know, just seizing property, taking over shit. Blowing up innocence. All right, I think they were saying the Red Cross really can't even get into that area because they just they just they just shooting off. All right, it's warfare. All right, it has nothing to do with us, man. This is Isaiah twenty nine and twenty. 
And this is what's going to happen. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the terrible one being Esau, Edom. And the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. That make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. And that's what Esau does. All right, they're looking to trap us up in snares. You guys said this, and the whole time, you guys have done all the all the bullshit. All right, you guys can't find any cases where we did any of the shit that you guys are talking about. You can't find any 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 records. Nothing. All right, because they don't exist. <laughs> We just read certain things that were done in the ancient world, but all the things that were done in the ancient world, we're not doing and applying to modern day. I'm going to read a little more. Verse 22. Therefore, thus saith the Most High who redeemed Abraham. And isn't that, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that so funny? You tried to compare them to Amalek, and you're the actual Amalekites. <laughs> you're the actual heads of Esau, Edom. Right, isn't, that, isn't that crazy? That, that's hilarious, man. But that's, this is what we mean when we said the Heavenly Father has these people in a trick bag. He'll have you thinking one thing, and the whole time, that applies to you. All right? Hey, the scriptures talk about with the wicked, they said they teach themselves lies. They said, he said they will believe a lie and not believe the truth. That's a trick bag. That your mind can't compute what's true, what's right in front of your face, but you teach yourself to believe a lie. Something something that you even know in the back of your mind is bullshit. All right? And you can't prove, man, hey, the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father is going to shake up the earth, man. He controls the minds of men, the hearts of kings, same thing. All right, it says, Therefore said the Most High who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not know, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. All right, and I remember a lot of people used this scripture to say that the Israelites couldn't look, uh, couldn't have uh, quote unquote pale skin, lighter skin. And this is talking about um, being confused, man. This is talking about shame. Right, like I said, should not be ashamed. Basically, we are, we are, we 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 got to understand who our power is. That shame is coming off us. Right, we understand who we are. We're standing standing up on our feet. All right, and I got a couple of precepts for that. Because yeah, you're gonna have Israelites who look like Amalek. You have Israelites who look like Esau. Now the question is if they repent. Which I think I know a couple of them who look like who look like Amalek. Alright, but this is um Psalms forty four and fourteen. It says, Thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head of the head among the people. My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face hath covered me. Right. Confusion and shame. All right, that's what you see when you when you saw us in, in in all of these different slavery pictures. You saw shame and confusion, cause it's like a why, you know? What did I do? Who am I? You know? You had no understanding, but now we do. <laughs> Verse sixteen: For the voice of him that reproacheth and blasphemeth. By reason of the enemy and avenger. All this has come upon us, yet have we not forgotten thee, neither have we dealt falsely in thy covenant. Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from thy way. And this is this is true for the elect. Now the elect is never gonna turn back. Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragons, and covered us with the shadow of death. Shit, that's where we at now, man. We're in the valley of the shadow of death. All right, the place of dragons. Right? That's, that's, <laughs> and serpents. 
If we have forgotten the name of our power or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not the Most High search this out? For he knoweth the secret of the heart. Yea, for the sake are we killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast us not off forever. Right? And that's uh and that's exactly what we pray. You know. Destroy it, hey Lord, bring us back and take these people down. And he's doing it. He's doing it. It's, it's, it's a process. He's doing it. He's working. All right. Whatever happens this year, man, Lord willing, this will be the last election, the final election of America. Like this, this shit, the way it's going, whoever wins, it's going, it's, it's going, it's like, a, what's the alien versus predator? Slow, whoever wins, we lose. You know, that's, that's what's about to happen. All right, if she wins, it's going to be hell. If he wins, it's going to be hell. All right, this is Isaiah 47 and 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So this is that, that woman who sits and said, I am a lady, right? I shall, I shall, I was to say, I shall not be a widow. I shall not weep. But now she ain't sitting on the throne, man. She's about to sit in the dust. It says, take the millstone and grind mill. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Yeah, yeah, expose this man. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yep, that's 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 shame. Make your nakedness being shown. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Right? And this is Yahweh Shai, man. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. He would not meet. Uh, these people as a man he's coming as a celestial force right, with all the forces of heaven and yeah Esau you're being exposed now you're going to continue to be exposed to the end Iron Dome ain't working the usual business ain't working the, 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 you know no, nobody really believes in, in America anymore man they know this is all bullshit alright especially all these heathens that you brought here they come here and they see like this. Uh, this shit is. I talk to a lot of them. They, they see this shit is bullshit. This place is horrible. I'm just getting enough money and going home. All right. The scriptures talk about that. They say every man gonna go back to his own land. All right, Jeremiah 13 and 23. Matter of fact, that's talking about Israel. Yeah, a lot of you Israelites, you wicked Israelites, your shame is about to be seen too. Um, but this is talking about Israel. Let's go to Obadiah 1 and 10. A hey, verse 9, matter of fact. Verse 8. Shall not I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? So you Edomites, you thought you were so smart and so slick and you could quote the Bible and play games and you don't fit the prophecy. And everybody knows that. All right, the average, Ameri the average American Christian don't know shit. But some of these Christians that study these theologists, and they, they know that. Now, this is stuff that they talk about behind the scenes, though. This is not stuff that they're going to dis they're going to discuss openly right, because they read and they study and. They have a certain level of understanding, the, the smart ones, not, not all of them. You know, not the average dumb Christian. All right, it says, and, I, and this is why Vocab Malone, he'll never talk about Esau. He'll no, never go in on Esau. He'll never try to identify which nation is which nation according to the scriptures, even though it says there is no end of the people. Right, every nation from the, from the beginning is still here. The Israelites are still here. Esau is still here. Even though he said multiple times they were destroyed, he'll never talk about uh, the, the law of return of, of coming back. You know what I'm saying? He'll, he'll never go into that. All right, verse nine. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, 
and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners. And when you look up the history on us, Esau was always there. Every time the temple was destroyed with the Babylonians, Esau was right there. You know, of course, the Grecians, they, just, they did it themselves. Right? Every time Jerusalem was, 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 was seized, Esau was not too far away. All right. They love it, man. They love seeing you fall. That's why it's important for us to, to, to keep our foot on the gas, man, and stay in these scriptures, because this is going to be the stability, right? The faith for, 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 uh, for, for these times where things are about to get shaky. Right? They're about to cut a lot of they're about to try to cut people off and force them to make stupid decisions. And a lot of our people are going to make stupid decisions. All right, it says, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them, that you were right there with the heathens. Oh, you've got, oh, oh you've got them. <laughs> yep, but thou shouldest not, shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Yeah, we became strangers, we became Gentiles. We became went into captivity under 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 other forces. All right, and yeah, you can say the Lord Heavenly Father did put us in slavery, but like I said, you shouldn't have looked, you shouldn't have been part of it. All right, the Lord used your hand though. All right, it says, neither should I have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly. In the day of distress, thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. And you know they still got our stuff. Uh, they still got our gold. I said, they still got it. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. And such is true, man. Such is true. On your own pate, on your own head, the sword is about to get you. All right? And that's just, that's just due. And that's justice. All right, I'm going I'm to finish off with an excerpt from this article. It says, ever since this war began, he is always quoting the Bible, some of Netanyahu, and in his last statements were the strongest so far in the way he quoted the Bible. And I was intrigued, and I'm a little bit concerned about this, because typically when Hamas and Hezbollah have used the language of holy wars in the way in which they are, you know, described their fight with Israel, Israel never responded in such language first. Because, first of all, Israel is a secular state. It's not a religious state. It's not a fundamentalist state. But secondly, when you are talking in the language of holy wars, there can be no resolution that includes a compromise to that conflict. Yep. See, these people are, are it's, either, it's either do or die in, in this situation. You know, once you start bringing out the scriptures, that's absolute. That means that the Heavenly Father is riding with you. You know, so you better know what you're talking about. It says, you are fighting in the name of God. And when you are fighting in the name of God, it is right. It is a total war until a total victory of the God of Israel over the God of the enemy. Even though it's the same God in that context. But it is always like it's a total and complete war with no way of compromising. And that's where we're going. Except in this day and age, there's nuclear technology. So even if you do win on some ground forces, there's always that option for that button to get pressed. All right, it says, that's basically it. Yeah, that's basically it. So, all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash. 
You know, these people are completely exposed. Skirts being lifted. Shame. Shame is covering them. Right? Nobody likes you. Everybody's looking at you crazy. You know, even your own people. All right? In fighting. See, this word has reached out to the four corners of the earth. And now your kingdom is about to fall. And, uh, you know, the, 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 that, that, that measure on the scale is being reached. And that tipping point, we're here. Salam to the elect.